<laughs> All right. Well, it looks like uh, it looks like things are starting to smooth out again. I can uh, looking at my preview and everything. We can kind of start over. So welcome to Spindle TV. Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, Planet CNC TNG motion controller software. Uh, we're not going to have a Vetric class for everybody that just popped in. There's no Vetric software design class or anything tonight. We are going to be covering the um, Planet CNC TNG, the next generation, motion controller software. The motion controller software for Planet CNC TNG is the motion controller software that we use with the digital woodcarver CNC machines, uh, but it's also it's a motion controller software that's used by uh, you know many other CNCs and everything. Um, and so I'm hoping that we can get through this without any more audio issues or video issues or anything like that. I do apologize. The quickest way to lose views is not have your uh, your, your videos be too smooth and stuff. And I know we have issues in the beginning. We always bounce back after a few minutes, uh, but one of these days we'll get things uh, tightened right where we won't have any of the audio issues. So thank you for hanging out uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, allowing me to waste a little bit of your time uh, while I fix it and everything. All right. Um, I, uh, I am excited about this because uh, with the TNG software, and let's switch over to the other screen. Let's get over to the other screen here. And I'm going to go into the TNG motion controller software. Let it load up and then we'll move it over to the big screen. And uh, keep me straight, guys. If my audio starts messing up and everything, uh, let me know. But the motion controller software, this TNG stands for the next generation. So we at Digital Woodcarver started out with Mach 3 uh, back in the day. And um, uh, I have no bad words or anything to say about Mach 3. It's, it's a pioneer. It's been around for years. Many, many, many people use it and everything. Uh, but we found ourselves um, uh, wanting to be a little bit more advanced and stuff. And so we ended up changing over to Planet CNC TNG software. Uh, and we have a lot of control within uh, this software. We first, Planet CNC before TNG came out, had a program called CNC USB Controller. Uh, it was their kind of their original version of this. And we started out with that CNC USB controller. Uh, it took us from the big old parallel port to USB. Now we could connect to the you know computers and stuff through USB. It was a nice little advancement for us and everything. And then Planet CNC went and came out with the TNG program, the next generation. And man, is this program awesome. Uh, this controller program sends out very smooth algorithms and, and signals and things uh, allowing our machines to run just absolutely smooth uh, but we have a lot of control on the front end and the back end of the software uh, meaning that as a user I can add custom functions and buttons and controls I can I can control you know some of my tools and accessories and stuff uh, within the software or the software has some, you know, some of its own wonderful functions and features built into it. But um, I am always looking at uh, uh, trying to add new things. Um, the TNG software, uh, Michael Parrish, please be specific. Uh, what's the price difference from what? If it's from CNC USB controller, there is no price difference as long as you have an MK34. Planet CNC USB controller board, MK34, you can migrate over to TNG for free. But if you're coming from like Mach 3 or something like that, then uh, you would buy the control board, which comes with the software. You'd be changing out your control board. And the control board and software is about 300 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, uh, but uh, it's fabulous. And uh, they have the MK34 board. Uh, which is a four axis controller. Uh, then they also have the MK3 board, which is a nine axis control board. 
Uh, that one's a little bit up there in price. I believe it's like $100 more and all, but we use the MK34 board uh, for all of our CNC machines, and uh, it's pretty cool. So before we were rudely interrupted with audio and video and technical difficulties and things, I was talking about uh, one of our accessories at Digital Woodcarver, which is our um, DWC Quick Set zeroing tool. Uh, it's basically an edge finding tool for X, Y, and Z, uh, but also there's a center circle finding for uh, X and Y as well. So there's a couple of ways that it can be used. Uh, and uh, the quick set tool mounts onto the corner of a project board, and we have a touch off series and all that will set X, Y, and Z. And before we were interrupted, I wanted to take a moment and show uh, the quick set block in action and um, we're gonna do that now so we're gonna go ahead and minimize TNG for a moment and I'm gonna bring up a uh, video here and in this video uh, basically we have our router uh, getting ready to do a touch off and so it's going to automatically uh, touch off X Y Z that it's gonna move out of the way uh, allowing us to move our block out of the way so it can come back home. So uh, let's take a quick second or a moment to watch this process. Now the video is a little jumpy. Uh, it's not your screens or anything. It's actually I was holding the camera freehand uh, filming this and I was a little bit shaky. I should have put it on a tripod, but uh, here we go. So it's going to do an X touch off. It's going to come around the corner and do a Y touch off. It's going to raise up and do a Z touch off. And then it's going to move out of the way, allowing the user to remove the block. And then we can bring the CNC back home for that X, Y, and Z zero home position. All right. So with that, Let's go ahead and come out of here and come back into TNG. And so the <clears throat> with the quick set block, uh, that DWC quick set zeroing tool, uh, we used a software um, that I wrote, uh, a Windows app software that I wrote called the DWC quick set G code generator. Basically, um, you could set your settings of your tool diameter. Uh, you have the sensor settings that are kind of defaulted by the size of the sensor. Uh, your length of travel to travel around the corner. And then if you're using the touch pin, because you're using a taper tool or something, there was the ability to add a tool change function in there so that after the Z or after the X and Y touch off, it would move to a location and you could change and take the touch pin out, put your bit in, and then it would come back and touch off the Z. Once everything was in, the user would generate a G code and they would run that G code in the controller program. Well, we're taking steps forward. We're taking advantage of the TNG software. The TNG software allows us to add custom scripts, custom buttons, custom tools and functions and things uh, within the software. So we're taking advantage of that by adding new tools and features that'll replace this Windows app program and put those functions right into the controller software itself. So my uh, class tonight is basically showing how, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the script that's written, uh, but then I'm gonna show how to install the script into the, your, your folders, your profile folders and everything uh, so that those buttons and everything appear within the software. And again, this is not, you know, a Vetra class and all. So anyone that doesn't have TNG, this might not be a video that you would relate to you. So, you know, if you can't stick around uh, and understand completely because, you know, it's kind of almost like a specialized video tonight. Uh, but uh, for those of you who do hang out with me uh, and everything, thanks for that and I uh, appreciate it. All right, so let's first... Uh, take a uh, look at this. Uh, let's close out of the, uh, the G code generator software that's getting replaced. This has now become obsolete. Uh, so we're going to get rid of the software. 
and um, we're going to come in to the download. We're going to come into the files, and we're going to take a look at one of the scripts, one of the scripts, the commands, and everything. Um, we have a wonderful author. Uh, that helps Digital Woodcarver with their TNG scripts. Uh, his name is Eric Marcus Jr. Uh, he works with us quite a bit for all of our graphics and things uh, and designs and vinyls and stuff, but he's also a very proficient uh, script writer for TNG and everything. So this is the uh, new script for the DWC Quickset Tool Sensor procedure, uh, the touch-off procedure and everything. And there are different tools. This one happens to be for the eighth inch diameter tool. We have one for a 3 16 inch diameter, one for a quarter inch diameter, one for a half inch diameter. Then we have one uh, procedure for uh, if you have a whatever custom size tool you're using. Uh, and then also one that if you're using the touch pin because your tool is tapered in some way, uh, it does a tool change. So we're, there's, there's like four or five scripts. Uh, and everything and I'm going to show you how to install them but let's take a quick look at the script and everything uh, basically at the top of the script uh, are what's called variables these are the this is basically the logic the variables for um, the uh, sensor and and distances of travel uh, the tool pin diameter size and, 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 and everything uh, our tool size should I say uh, but uh, the how it sets the offsets when it touches off and all um, and um, of course the sensor size parameters the travel distance when it's probing X Y and Z and all of these parameters are adjustable depending on if we happen to manufacture a different block a different quick set tool if this tool changes in any way it's very simple and easy to come in and adjust the parameters and it doesn't affect the actual code below uh, to, you know, nothing has to be changed in the script or the code below. Uh, now, I'm not going to bore you with going through all the script and everything, but basically I'm going to go through kind of chunks. So the first thing that it does is at a set probe speed, five inches per minute, it will probe and touch off the x-axis and it will set the x-axis based on the offset, which is three quarters of an inch on that uh, quick set tool, if you see in the camera down below, three quarters of an inch on those edges and everything, it will set that offset you know, for that X axis. Then it will come through and set the offset for the Y axis. After setting the offset for the Y axis when it travels the corner and stuff, then it will go through and it will raise itself up and move over the uh, quick set block and it will proceed to do the tool uh, offset measure for the Z. Now if you are using the touch pin in the other script for the tool change after this procedure it would actually move to a location that you define and then come back and touch off the Z after the tool change was completed. Once everything is done it prints a log report, and I'll show you the log when we actually add the tools to the function or to the uh, TNG program. Uh, but it actually creates a report of the procedure touch off and everything. That report could, uh, you know, be viewed and, 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 and everything. And then from there, it sets the X, Y, and Z, making the machine position and the absolute or the work position, should I say, match, removes the offsets, and zeroes everything out. You know, uh, but not necessarily the word zero. It it makes everything match, uh, removes the offset, and then when we come back home to X, Y, and Z zero, it zeroes out the machine. It's all automated, and everything. So uh, this script, uh, Eric uh, Marcus Jr. did a wonderful job on all of the scripts. He does a wonderful job for our tool changing scripts and everything like that. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the different scripts for the five tools, eighth inch, three sixteenths inch, quarter inch diameter, half inch diameter, your own tool if it's a different diameter like three eighths or something you know odd, and then also if you're using our touch pin, the touch pin is basically a quarter inch diameter touch pin that comes with the unit, and when you're using a tapered tool, 
you would actually put the touch pin in your spindle or router, do the touch off for X and Y, then there would be a tool change putting your actual bit in, and then it would come and touch off the Z. So we're gonna walk through how to add these files to the TNG software to create our buttons and functions and all. Now, um, for the most part, if we go online on the internet here, and if we go into uh, the digitalwoodcarver.com website, if we go into the digitalwoodcarver.com website, um, on the website at the top of the page, there is a support and downloads page. Uh, now, the DWC quick set tool can be used with any CNC. Uh, the tool actually uh, connects the ground, connects to your board, whoever's machine board, your board's ground and your input sensor to create like a switch, like a touch off switch for your touch probe and everything. So that quick set tool could be, you know, attached to any CNC machine. But uh, with the TNG program, we can add these custom button features to run the operation. On, in the support and downloads page on the Digital Wood Carver website, uh, you will see the Planet CNC uh, TNG controller section and uh, you can download the files and there's gonna be a new file download available here uh, as of midnight tonight for all of these files and everything. But let's say for sake, uh, you know, uh, for the sake of this class that that download is already there. Uh, we would click uh, where it says click here and it's gonna take us to a Google Drive folder where this zip file is located. And um, we would download the zip file and uh, let's close that. Let's go in here. Um, let's go in here. Uh, it would, uh, that was a setting file. I didn't want to share. We didn't need to see that. But um, it would create a zip file and everything. There's going to be a zip file for this touch tool uh, buttons and controllers and strips. Uh, the individual would download that to their computer. And once they've downloaded that file, uh, that zip file, they're going to extract it. And when they extract it, they're going to have two folders here called DWC Guide Profile Files and DWC, or I'm sorry, Quick Set Guide Profile Files. I keep saying DWC, I apologize. And then also Quick Set Guide Script Folder Files. Uh, within the Guide uh, Profile Files um, folder, uh, these will be our buttons, our icons, and everything as well as our script, uh, putting those buttons at the bottom of the screen on our, in our program. The quick set script files will be the six scripts that will go in to create the commands, the controls, the operation and everything. So how we would do this is, is we would start with our, uh, either one, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna start with the profile files and I'm going to uh, grab all of these files here and I'm going to copy them, right click and copy. And then I'm going to go into my C drive, program files folder, planet CNC, and then our pro files folder. Now, you may have just a default profile folder if you have uh, like the mini carver uh, with, uh, you know, no laser, none of that stuff. Or if you have the 2440 with no laser or spindle or fourth axis. But if you have a fourth axis on your CNC, if you have a laser or a water-cooled spindle, then you're actually gonna have a default folder, but you're gonna have other profile folders. And we would wanna add these folder, these files to whichever profile that you use, that you're using, or all of them you know, if it applies, but these only apply to when you're in mill mode carving on the table and stuff. So what I'm going to do is my default folder. I don't have any other profiles. I have my default folder. I'm going to open up that default folder. And within the default folder is where I'm going to right click and paste my bottom button script and all of the images for the um, for the little icons, for the icons. Once that's done, 
I'm going to go back to that folder, my download folder that I unzipped and everything. And I'm going to go into my script files now. And I'm going to select and copy all of my script files. From there, I'm going to go back into that C drive, program files, planet CNC, and I'm going to go into profiles again, my default folder, but this time I'm going to open up the scripts folder. And in the scripts folder, we can add up to 99 custom scripts and codes and functions and things. And so well, there's many more to come from us and stuff, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to paste those script files into my script folder. Once I've done that now, I can go in and I can close out of the TNG program and simply reboot it, restart the program. So I'm going to come down here and restart it. And now when we open it up, Now when we open it up, you'll notice across the bottom, we have some new tools, some new tools and buttons and everything. So we'll go ahead and max that out. And so we've got our button here for our eighth inch tool, our 13, uh, or I'm sorry, our 3 16 inch tool, our quarter inch tool, our half inch tool. If we have a custom tool size we need to put in, we can do that with this function here. If we're doing a tool change, a touch off, and then a tool change in that touch off, or if we're just going to use the center circle finder, which is basically bringing the tool down into the circle here and it touching off and finding the center of that circle to find X and Y. So there's a couple of ways we can use it. Well, what I'm going to do, I actually have a board here, uh, and I'm going to show you the... Uh, operation of this uh, but unfortunately I'm not out of my shop to show you the actual machine moving but I'm going to show you what the software does so let's just assume that we have our eighth inch tool in there we're doing a touch off with an eighth inch tool I'm going to click on the eighth inch tool button the first thing that's going to pop up is our DWC quick set for eighth inch tool um, prompt that is either asking us if we want to continue to run the operation by clicking OK or if we need to cancel out of it. If I click OK, if you watch my you know, machine side, our controls over here and everything, um, also let me go ahead and open up, let's cancel out of this and let's open up the log. So under the help menu is the show log and uh, let's open up the log and this is the reporting log, and I'm gonna put it over here on the right side of the screen. This is the reporting log that kind of prints out what's happening and things when operations are taking place. So what's gonna happen is, uh, let's go ahead and open up our tool, and let's go ahead and click OK. It's going to, um, oops, I got a set, there was a warning here, so automatically the procedure was terminated because I do not have my sensor set up correctly in my settings file. So it automatically stops because it could not locate a sensor. Wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the log. Let's go into our file settings. And I just uh, need to go over to my um, input outputs uh, under my measure section in the settings down here, measure. And I need to, um, you know, make sure my sensor is set up. So input sensor two is going to be set. I'm going to uh, set it at one. .01 for your normal touch sensor that comes with the machine and .5 for uh, the quick set block. But I'm going to set that. I'm going to do a test on my board and make sure my 
sensor is configured properly. It is. Uh, you can see input two lighting up as I touch off the sensor and everything. And so <clears throat> I should not get a termination error. Let me let me go through and just make sure in my settings that I got everything set up properly. And I should. Let's go ahead and run through that again. Go ahead and click OK. Look at there. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stand by. <laughs> All right, the tool sensor is configured properly. So what is going on with you, ladies and gentlemen? Settings. Let me go into my input-output settings here. In two, one. Probe size is set up correctly. I'm going to export these settings. <clears throat> Export my settings because I made the change and I did not save that change. So I'm going to go into my profiles default let me give it a date now most DWC users their setting file is already set up but this is a mock program that I added to the computer this morning uh, and I did not save my settings and now I'm going to go through and I'm going to import. I'm going to go through and import those settings again to make sure the software is pointing to them. Uh, let's go to profiles, default. Let's grab that setting file, click open, and we should be good. Now, one of the things I'm definitely wanting to do is uh, let's... Uh, Ah, okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, this program, I was testing my uh, tool changer for my bigger machine. Let me import. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me import our setting files. See what happens when you try to do something smoothly and it all goes to hell. Uh, let's go into uh, downloads. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I forgot that I was doing, I was testing tool changer today. Uh, let's go down to... TNG software. Let's grab my setting file here. Open that up. All right, let me get my machine connected back uh, to this. I got to go to File, Settings, <clears throat> Connection, click on my board, and click OK. And I should be good to go now. So now I should be able to successfully, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I'm getting choked up here. I should be able to successfully uh, run my tool. Okay. <laughs> 
How many people are laughing at me right now? Thinking, my goodness. Let's go into my file settings. Input, output. Click OK. File. Export settings. Profile. Default. Probably should have tested this before I started, right? My sensor is configured properly. All right, let me go into the scripts and make a change. Do not, from this point on, guys, uh, ignore everything that I'm doing because you do not have to do this. You will, yours will be configured properly. Um, but uh, give me a second. Making sure that my inputs and everything are configured properly all right I'm gonna open up the script I'm sorry guys uh, Standby, I'm looking. Let's go down to the code. If that's the problem right there, uh, let's close the log for a second. If sensor one pin equals zero and sensor two pin equals zero or if sensor X equals zero, sensor Y equals zero, sensor that zero. Then prints that error that we're seeing. Otherwise, okay, this change right here, I need to change right here. Let's go ahead and all I have to do, that's easy enough, sorry about that. Um, there was a redundant code in there that uh, needed to be taken out. All of this was finalized uh, last night, so you'll have to apologize, or I'll have to apologize uh, to you for this big waste of time. Um, I need to go into my measure, and I need to set my uh, sensor here. There, let me export this.
All right. I should now be able to function properly. Oh, you son of a gun. All right, I'm going to take that line of code out of the script for right now so we can move forward because this is absolutely how many viewers have I lost up to this point? Holy jeez Louise. <clears throat> Let me grab, uh, let's see, 20, 21, 22. Let me grab UD 22 as well. Um, Please bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. Let me. I'm just removing a line of code. All right. File save. Uh, we're gonna save this. I was just giving old Eric uh, all the kudos. No, he's amazing. Uh, but uh, this is brand new, so give me a second. Should now be able to come into here and reload that. And let's see how well we do. You son of a bitch. My sensor is configured properly. Okay, well, I'm not going to waste any more time if this doesn't, if I can't. Uh... How many are still watching? Give me a thumbs up if you're still watching this massacre. Holy jibbelees. Oh my gosh. It's Don't you love when a YouTuber just crashes and burns? Oh my God. Help me. File. Import settings.
Almost there, guys. What a friggin' loving and wonderful me right now. Ha! Who was the who was the lovely person that told me to restart TNG? Who was that? Who was that? Alan. Look at you. Alan knows his stuff, man. No. Yeah, it would have helped if I would have restarted the TNG software, guys. We just wasted how many how many minutes of our life because uh, I didn't do a restart after importing. Uh, the new setting file. Yeah, baby. Okay. All right. So once again, uh, when we're running a tool uh, touch off and everything, um, we basically, I got my eighth inch tool in there and it doesn't matter what my numbers are set at or anything like that. Uh, when I bring my eighth inch tool, Let's go ahead and open that up. <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, as we click OK, uh, it's going to start moving. And once it trips, it's going to move around the corner. And then it's going to start probing for Y axis. Once the Y axis trips, the Z is going to raise up and it's going to move over the block and it's going to do a Z touch off. Once the Z touches off, then it's going to move out of the way. Now, at the very end of the code, at the very end of the code and um, everything, uh, we can actually, I could probably show the path. Um, our work and machine areas match. So when I bring the machine back home, zero, zero, it's, it sets everything zero zero automatically and so uh, sorry about I, I, I hate when I confuse things and stuff when stuff scro screws up because all of that's like okay what do I do what what where, where am I at and everything so now that we've got everything configured properly and stuff let's go ahead and uh, take a quick recap very quick recap uh, from the file explorer when the user downloads the zip folder when the user downloads the zip folder he's going to unzip he or she or is going to unzip the uh, quick set guide files and there are two folders profile uh, folders and then script folders uh, files so if we look at the profile files these are our icons and our script for putting the buttons at the bottom of the screen we're going to take and copy those and they're going to go into our C drive, program files, planet CNC, profile folders, default, and they're going to get pasted in that default folder. They're going to get pasted in that default folder. Once, they're, once that's done, then we're going to go back to the unzipped file. And we're going to open up the script files and we're going to take and copy the six script files. Those are going to go back to our C drive, program files, planet CNC. And in our profiles, we're going to actually go into the default folder go into the scripts folder and we're going to paste those scripts in there. Once that's done, once that's done, then we can open up the TNG program. And when we open up the TNG program, our buttons will be at the bottom. Now, your sensors and all of that stuff that I just went through are already configured because you use your touch sensor all the time, not your quick set block necessarily, but your touch sensor you use all the time. It's configured properly. So you won't have that issue or that error um, that uh, we ran into. 
My problem was I didn't have it configured properly and then when I imported the new setting file, I did not restart the program and therefore it was not clicking in that I've actually changed my settings. So that was my issue all along. Whew. So we have the uh, setting files. Now we have preset tools for eighth inch, three sixteenths inch, quarter inch, and half inch diameter. And then we also have a tool size. So when you actually use that one, it's going to prompt you to put in a tool diameter, whatever it may be. And you always want to touch off on the largest diameter of your bit. Okay. So let's imagine I put my tool, my three quarter inch tool in there. That's what I'm going to program it for. If I have a larger tool or, you know, whatever, one inch diameter, I'm going to program that in. And then when I click OK, it's going to start the probing procedure. After it probes Z, it's going to move around the corner. And then it's going to start probing for Y once it gets in the center of the block. Once it makes contact with Y, it's going to then back off and raise up the Z move over the touch block and then it's going to touch off on the Z. And once Z is touched off, it's then going to raise up and move out of the way so the user can remove the touch block. It resets everything within the machine and the work position. It removes the offset so that way the machine and work position match. So when we do bring the unit back home to X, Y, and Z zero, everything is zeroed out automatically. Now, if there's a tool change procedure, a tool change procedure means that I'm using a tapered end mill, like a tapered ball nose. And the largest diameter of that tapered ball nose is the shank of the bit. And I can't use the shank of the bit because if I can't lower my bit down low enough to get to the shank, I don't have enough room on my, my touch block is on the corner of my three quarter inch board. So I don't have enough room to go down to the shank. So instead of using the uh, tapered bit for X and Y touch off, you use the provided quarter inch touch pin that's provided with the quick set block. And let me see if I can turn on, let's see if I can show the uh, path and stuff. Let's see here. Sorry about that. I moved the whole screen there. So the path for touch off that you see, this is kind of the, the, the toolpath history that you see here, the two toolpath histories. Um, after it touches off, it moves around the corner, then it touches off for Y. It comes back, raises itself up, and moves over the block for the Z touch off, and then it moves out of the way. Well, for the tool change, let's turn off this view, let's turn off the toolpath history. <clears throat> for the tool change, meaning I'm using my touch pin instead of my actual tool that I'm going to carve with, I'm going to put in the diameter of that touch pin and it's already default set for a quarter of an inch because that's the size of the pin that's provided. Um, but you might have a something bigger, who knows? <coughs> you know, whatever, you might use a custom pin you want, you know, what have you. But when we run this procedure, it's going to do the normal X and Y touch off. Once it meets the X, it's going to back up and move around the corner. It's going to start, once it gets to the center of the block, it's going to start probing for Y. After the touch off, it's going to raise up and move over the block, but then it's going to stop. When it stops, it's going to prompt you to specify a tool change location. Where do you want this router to move incrementally? Where do you want it to move down the table uh, so that you have room to change your, you know, uh, do your tool change. And so in my case, uh, as a default, it's set for 15 inches. It's going to move down the table 15 inches and it's on the uh, X. It's going to move over on the Y and it's going to raise the Z up another half an inch. So I have room to take my tool out 
So that's fine for me. If I needed to change it, I could change it uh, to whatever I wanted to. Um, so once I do that and I click OK, it's then going to move back on that Y and then move down that 15 inches on the X. And then it's going to go into a hard stop. A hard stop, which that pause button you saw light up there. Now I would take that pin out. I would put my actual bit that I'm going to carve with in. And once I had my bit in, then I would come back and I would click the pause button and it's going to return back over the block. Once it's over the block, it's going to start probing for Z. And once it touches off, it's then going to move back out of the way so the user can remove the touch block. And then it's going to reset the machine and work position so that when we come home, our X, Y, and Z are zero, and everything is zeroed out. All automated now. It's all automated now. Okay? So, now, I have one more tool and one more button that I'd like to add to this for something different. And let's say that I want to use my fourth axis on my CNC. Um, and right now, I'm in mill mode. I'm in mill mode. And I only have one profile. So my program, because I programmed it today, is not set up for fourth axis. It's only set up for mill mode right now. I need to create a second profile for my fourth axis settings and everything. So how I'm going to do that is, is I'm going to come to my desktop here and I'm going to create a new shortcut on my desktop. Now it's asking me what program would I like to be associated with this uh, shortcut. And so I'm going to go browse my C drive. I'm going to go into program files. And I'm going to come into Planet CNC and I'm going to open up or click on the Planet CNC 64 program. And click OK. When I click Next, it's going to ask me to name this profile. This profile is going for us is going to be DWC fourth axis mode. And I'm going to click finish. And it's going to create this profile icon for me. That means I'm going to be opening up that tool. Now I would have two icons right now the three axis and the four axis, you know, my mill mode and my fourth axis. Um, so, but at this time I want to put, I want to set the settings for my fourth axis. So on this shortcut, now I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go into the properties of the shortcut. And in the properties under the target, meaning when I click that button, what file is it going to target? It's going to open up that Planet CNC program, but I want it to target I put my mouse behind this little quote mark here and put a space. I want it to target the DWC underscore fourth axis underscore mode dot settings file. Okay, I want it to target that. Now, if you notice my icon for my uh, fourth axis mode, that DWC underscore fourth axis mode, I typed it exactly the same way in the target, only adding the dot settings to that. Now I'm going to click apply and I'm going to click OK. Uh, let's take a quick question here. John Withrow says, if you go back and forth between the 0.01 sensor and the quick set, do you have to change the settings every time? No, you do not. No, you do not. Okay. The scripts take care of all of that, John. 
All right, so now that I have my fourth axis uh, uh, target, my shortcut basically created, now I can open that program. And when I open that program, when I open that program, it's basically going to be the raw TNG program. No settings for my machine, no nothing. You know, it's the raw program. So what I need to do is I need to uh, import my machine's settings. So I'm going to come into File, Import Settings, and I'm going to navigate to my settings file. My settings file at this point in time happens to be in my Downloads folder. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that fourth axis settings file and I'm going to cut it or copy it not cut it I'm gonna copy it from there and I am gonna go back into my TNG folder this time when I go into profiles you're now gonna see a new folder called DWC fourth axis mode and so I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna paste that setting file in there and then I'm gonna click open You'll see the screen change, and up at the top here it says Digital Woodcarver Fourth Axis. Digital Woodcarver Fourth Axis. Now, on my Fourth Axis, again, this is a raw program. I don't have any buttons or functions or features or anything set down here. And I won't be using the DWC Quick Set with the Fourth Axis, the rotary axis, so I don't need those buttons and stuff. But I will be using the fourth axis step calculator. The DWC fourth axis step calculator, if I were to open the Windows app version, you'll see my ugly mug on that, that program. That's kind of just, I'm looking at you, making sure you run this program at the beginning of every fourth axis job. Uh, you're gonna choose your CNC machine. And based on your machine, when you type in the stock diameter that you're going to be carving on that fourth axis, let's say two and a half inches. When you click calculate based on your machine, it's going to calculate the steps per unit for your motor. How many steps that motor needs to take to make a full 360 degree revolution for that two and a half inch diameter stop. And the original way a user would copy this from the program, from the Windows app. They would copy, click copy, and they would go into the settings. They would click on settings. And they would go down to steps per unit. And they would actually paste that number that they copied in the motor Y, which is the rotary axis and they'd click OK and then they would start their job. You know, they'd click OK and start their job. Well, once again, we've made the separate window program obsolete. So we're gonna now integrate it with TNG. So we're gonna minimize out of this and we're gonna go into the folder here. Let's go back to my downloads folder and let's go into my fourth axis files folder, a zip file that I've downloaded from the support and downloads page. And in here, we have our button code, our button, step calculator button, and our four scripts, five scripts. This is for the mini carver, script 30 is for the mini carver, Script 31 is for the 2440 that is pre-2016, you know, earlier model units. Uh, script 32 is for newer model, uh, anything after 2016, 2440 units. 33 script is for our 4x4 machines, and 34 is for our 4x8 machines. So I have a 2440, a newer model 2440, so... That's gonna be U32. So I'm gonna take that file and I'm going to copy that file. 
and I'm going to go into my folder here, Planet CNC folder, into my profiles. And I'm going to go into that fourth axis mode folder. And in scripts, I'm going to paste that script file. I'm going to add it to that scripts folder. Then I'm going to go back to my download folder that I unzipped and everything. And I've got my image and my fourth axis button folder here. And this button file here is um, basically telling the software to put the, uh, you know, it's going to be at the bottom of the page and everything. And so what I need to do is you're gonna not see you're not gonna see a uh, file that says fourth axis button code. You're gonna see a file that says button bottom btn bottom. So I'm gonna create that button bottom that button bottom file save as. And you'll have this already in your download folder. And I'm going to copy this. I already got one here, so I might as well copy that. And we're going to save that. And let me go grab that button bottom file there. And I'm going to go back to my profiles folder on my C drive. Program files, planet CNC. I'm going to go into my profiles and I'm going to go into that DWC fourth axis mode folder and right here in the root of that folder I'm going to paste that button file. Now if I open that button file up, you're going to see, and we can get rid of this, that doesn't need to be there, and we can get rid of this, you're going to see a function here that's going to basically put that button, that image button, at the bottom of the screen. And it's going to be calling for a certain function. Okay. Now, this UD30 is not the function for mine, right? Because if I go back in here in my scripts, it was UD32, right? So I want to make sure that in my button bottom page, my little page here, and again, we'll uh, delete all that. I want to make sure that this says 32 because I have a 2440 later access model. Okay, I want to make sure it calls that 32 for my machine. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, file save as. And I can't save it directly to my profile folder. I got to copy and paste it because my, uh, you know, my security settings and everything. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to save this. It's going to ask me if I want to replace my file. I'm going to say yes. And then I can go in and copy it and come back to my fourth axis mode and I can paste it in there replacing the original. Once I do that, I can close everything. even my TNG software and I can reopen it. Now, if you notice, there's no button there. What's missing, right? I got the button bottom file in there, but I don't have the image file, right? I don't have the image file. So let's go in, because it's calling that image, 
I've got to go get the image. I got to grab the image. So I'm going to go over to my downloads, my fourth axis file, and I'm going to grab my image file and copy that. And I'm going to paste it in this folder. Okay, so you got to make sure that you have your image file and and that button bottom text file. You got to make sure those two files are in there. You also in your scripts folder, you got to make sure the appropriate script for your machine would be in there as well. So once I've done that, now when we restart that program, you'll see that we have a step calc button here at the bottom of the screen. And notice it's grayed out right now because my machine is not connected. My, this new software is not connected to my machine. So I got to connect it. So let me go through and connect it. I'm going to go file settings, connection. I'm going to click on my board, put it in the primary controller. That's going to connect me now. And then my little green LED showing me I'm connected shows me a little gray X in here. And that means my license information is missing my license for my board. So I got to go to help. There you go. License missing. So I got to go to help license management, my licenses. And I need to import a file. And when I import the file, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm importing it from the default folder. So I'm going to go in here and grab the license file from there because it's the same program. So I'm going to copy that or not copy that. I'm going to click open. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And now I should have a green connected light meaning I'm fully connected to my software and I've got my new step calc button in here, my step calculator built in. So if I click on that step calculator, I get this little prompt that comes up that says DWC 2440 step calculator. Now let's look at the log here because the log is very important for reporting. Let's go ahead and look at the log. But also, I want you to look at the very bottom of the screen. As a matter of fact, let me make the screen smaller. Let me kind of let me kind of size up the screen just a little bit so it's kind of in the middle here, not way down at the bottom there. But I want you. There's an information bar down here at the bottom of the TNG software. I want you to take a close look at that, uh, as well as the log that I've got open here, and everything. When I click on this step calculator. and I type in a stock diameter, whatever the diameter of my stock is, you know, let's say uh, two and a half inches. When I click OK, you're going to get basically a message here that says the steps per unit based on a two and a half inch diameter stock. OK, it's going to be here. The minute that I clicked OK and ran that function, it reported my procedure. The stock diameter, the steps per revolution on my motor, the timing pulley size uh, for the large and small pulley, the pulley ratio, the steps per revolution on the spindle, the circumference of the cylinder, and the motor Y steps per unit. That's the magic number, that 1.22. That's the circumference of my diameter. Well, if we look at the bottom of the screen here in our message bar across the bottom of the screen, it says instructions. View the log for calculation results and to copy the value for the motor Y steps per unit. What that means is, is when I click OK to close this window, it's going to print instructions in the log. And those log instructions say copy 
2093 value, right click and copy, uh, to update the motor Y settings that are located in the file menu, settings, motors, steps per unit, and motor Y. So I'm gonna go to file, settings, steps per unit, motor Y, and I'm going to paste that result. And I'm gonna click OK. Now, one exciting thing that's coming up is TNG is, you know, you know, being updated and stuff, but TNG V2 version 2 is coming out in the near future sometime. And in the near future, I can actually write and change a setting file. I can go write and change a setting in my script, in my code. So I won't have to copy and paste in no more and go in there manually. When I run that and click OK, it's automatically going to write that number to my motor Y value. I won't have to do any interaction with it. All I'll have to do is click on the step calculator, type in the diameter of my stock, click OK, and when I click OK here, it's going to actually write to the setting. But for now, we can't write to the settings. So in the log, in the instructions that gets automatically generated, we're going to take our number and copy it here. And we're gonna manually go into File, Settings, Steps Per Unit, and we're gonna paste that value in the motor Y and click OK. And then we're now we're ready to run our fourth axis job. Now that fourth axis motor knows how many revelations it needs to take for it to turn 360 degrees based on that stock diameter. The total circumference is 12.566372. So it's going to, you know, it's got to turn that. So adding buttons and custom functions and scripts is, you know, pretty straightforward when you don't screw it up like I did in the beginning because my sensor wasn't set properly, my setting file. But your setting files are already imported. You know, you've been running your machine up to this point and everything, so you won't go, you won't run into that glitch that I ran into. You won't run into that issue. I installed this program on my desktop computer, which does not run my CNC this morning, and I didn't set it up before class. I should have taken the time to set everything up before class properly. TNG is a powerful software. Um, we can control our settings. We can add our steps per units for our motors, you know, for our calibration of our motors. Uh, our machine's uh, maximum speeds and operations for each of the motors. We can, you know, limits. If we have limit switches, we can set those limits. We, if we don't have limit switches, we can actually set soft limits. But you got to have a fixed home position for that. One day we'll talk about that when I'm actually out of the machine so you can see it in operation. It won't make sense me trying to explain it to you. Your motion and range. You know, uh, the size of your table and things we can work with. Your jogging, you know, when you're jogging with your control pendant. Spindle controls. Home measure, when you're measuring uh, measuring and, and stuff. Your sensors or your probe if you're doing digital probing and everything. And then your scripts, you can actually edit your scripts from within here. All of the scripts that are built within the uh, program, you can edit within the software here you know you can edit within the software and the only scripts you can't edit within the software here are the user defined scripts the scripts that are created and added custom that we add the way we edit those the way we edit those scripts is we go into our master file wherever it would be for me it would be in my downloads folder under quick set g code or fourth axis and since i'm talking about the fourth axis 
and then I would find my script and I could change any of the parameters that I needed to for my machine so that uh, when it runs that stock diameter fourth axis and everything, it will calculate it properly. When I say change things, I'm talking changing things like the pulley size on my fourth axis, the rotary pulley and the belt, you know, for my large pulley and my small pulley and everything. My motors revolutions, you know, it's machine specific and all. So I could change and alter those customizing that for my machine. Well, these are already customized for the digital woodcarver, but I'm talking about, you know, someone else's machine that has a fourth axis and all. All right. So let's get out of this. And now I can close my fourth axis program. And I can come back in and open up my three axis, my three axis profile. I don't have a shortcut for my three axis profile. It's in my menu down here. I could put a shortcut on there. You know, I could, you know, uh, create a shortcut for it. You know, I'll pin it to my taskbar down here. But um, this profile is for my mill mode. And it automatically opens up my mill mode program with all my mill mode settings and everything, all my buttons and stuff and everything like that for running my on the table, not my fourth axis. So I have two programs essentially, profiles they're called. Properly, the proper term is I have two profiles, one for three axis, one for four axis. If I had a digital laser engraver on my machine, I would have a profile for my laser mode when I'm laser engraving. So within TNG, you know, we can get all kinds of reporting and on our functions and our, you know, our, our computer or our machines readouts, basically our control board readouts and, and things, uh, a diagnostic of my board so when I'm working with my sensor or my jog pendant and things, uh, these functions and everything light up, you know, when, when they're active and stuff. When I turn my spindle and router on, you know, uh, my outputs turn on, you know, my, my router and my vacuum and everything, output one and two. So, or output one actually, two is for a laser. But, um, so TNG is a pretty cool software ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I just wanted to walk you through how these files are going to be located at digitalwoodcarver.com. Once again, they will be as of midnight tonight. They will be located on digitalwoodcarver.com under the support and downloads page under the Planet CNC category. Now, for those of you that are interested and uh, you know uh, you can you would like a touch block for your you know um, machine but you don't have TNG or anything uh, you can you know you could still order a touch block from us if your manufacturer of your machine doesn't have one uh, under the shop accessories shop accessories On our accessory page, it's the DWC Quick Set Zeroing Tool. And the zeroing tool just wires uh, right to your control board's inputs, your sensor input, whatever your Z touch sensor is now, just wires right to that input. And it comes with a touch pin, uh, the probe, and, and everything. And uh, you can use the Windows based G code generator that I have. Um, to create a G-code for your different tools and stuff, this, this G-code generator here. It's still valid for other controllers and things that aren't using TNG. Now that you know, we've got it integrated into TNG now, but this Windows program will generate a G-code and 
this G code in this case for a quarter inch diameter tool. Uh, I can just generate that G code, save that file. It's going to save it as a tap file, and I would call this my 0.25. Touch tool measure. Procedure. And I could save that file. And in my controller program, whatever it may be, I could open, go to my desktop and find my G code and I could run that G code. So if I ran that G code, it's gonna do the same thing. You know, um, it will, uh, it would do the same thing. And so I could, uh, you know, run that program. And once it senses, it'll back off, go around the corner move over to the block and start the Y touch. Once it senses, it will raise up, go over the block. It will start the Z touch off. And once it senses for the Z touch off, it will back off so the user can remove the touch block. And then we're all said and done. You can bring it back home. You know, and the only thing you would have to do uh, in your machine, depending on how your controller is. I don't know everybody's controllers and all that stuff and all, but the work position was just set with that touch off and everything. Your machine's absolute position is showing the offset, the offset. So you would zero out the machine position. I don't know, I, I, I can't speak for everybody's, but in, in TNG, we would normally zero out the machine position and then clear the offsets so that the work and the machine match each other. But now all of that's automated with the buttons. It does that all automatically. But someone that doesn't have TNG, someone that wanted to you know, utilize a quick set block uh, in, in place of their touch tool uh, would run a G code and they would just have to, you know, whatever, whatever operation would require them when they zero out their machine to clear out those offsets. Anyway, so. Yeah. All right. So got a couple of questions here. Alan says, after running the touch plate, do you have to reset the program? I tried to run a file. It came up without the image uh, to run the program. Well, uh, what was happening, Alan? That's a great question. What Alan's uh, referring to is I just ran that quick set tool and I'm in incremental mode here right now. You know, when that quick set is running, it's running in incremental mode. And at the end of incremental mode, it has to go back into absolute mode. Because if it doesn't, if I go to import, if I go to open a G code file, let me find a G code real quick. When it loads, it's loading, stand by, it's 55% done. Maybe that wasn't a good G code file. Bear with me. I thought it would be Bob's bait and tackle shop sign. Let's see here. Yep. That was not a correct G code. Sorry, folks. Let me get one of my G codes. This is not my computer that runs my machine. So let me find a G code first. Um, a G code documents. Um, Oh, 
Oh, where would I have a daring G code on this computer? Uh, let's see here. DWC plasma post. this this is a dubious round so dubious round is under downloads let's go let's open up uh, let's open up TNG Oh yeah, Sylvia, the video is already saved. Uh, once I'm finished here, it'll be posted on Spindle TV. Um, but uh, let's go through this again. I'm going to um, open. My touch tool. Let's run through that again so I can show um, the what uh, Alan's question was. Okay, and now I'm gonna go open a file right after that. Now I haven't, you know, it's still kind of the program is still in incremental mode. And when I go and, um, run a program and let me get down to the D's here D D D E D right there when I open it up if you look at the code if you zoom out it's way funky crazy right it's like holy camoly what is that because it's still in incremental mode it, it it's it, it was never switched back to absolute and so the new codes the new codes at the end of the script the first thing it does is it changes it back to absolute mode now absolute mode is g90 right so if i go into program here and i edit my g code if I edit my G code, at the very beginning, if I type in G90, the minute that I update that G code with that G90, which is switching it back into absolute mode, my design comes back to the way it should. So we've got to get out of incremental mode and back into absolute mode Otherwise, TNG reads it as incremental, reads the design as incremental. So we've got to that G90. We gotta put that G90 in there. If you're using, if you're using the old Windows-based quick set touch off code, if you're using the new, the new functions for that quick set touch off it automatically switches back to absolute mode automatically. We don't have to manually add the G90 in there. You know. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right, Alan, did that answer your question? All right, so any questions on this? I know there's probably a lot, but any questions on this? Um, and uh, for those of you that uh, that were taking notes and everything, this 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 video is recorded, um, and uh, it will be on. Uh, spindle TV but there will be a short to the point 
how to install these files into your TNG video inside the zip file that you download. Step by step. No errors, no screw ups, no nothing. Step by step. And uh, that video will also be on Spindle TV, but it'll also be part of the digital download. The instructions, the instructions. Okay? The instructions and everything. I apologize for the glitches we had in the beginning of this video. Uh, and um, the confusion. All the confusion and the mess ups and stuff, I screwed up. I forgot to restart my program after installing the files and I screwed up and I wasted about a good, what, 20 minutes of our time? That was terrible. Always, always, I always, I'll, I'll find a way to mess up. But uh, we always, we always uh, get through it. But uh, every once in a while I get a little rattled and I forget, I forget to do something silly and stupid. And that's terrible. Because I'm teaching you guys how to do it, and then I forget, you know, a step or something, and I have to go back and recover. So, uh, it's 9 o'clock. I'm going to take a couple of sips of my drink here. And we're going to answer some questions, if there's any. And... Um, we're also going to uh, we're also going to uh, yeah we could try to run through it again with no mistakes this time on how to install those files but um, I believe uh, it'll be self-explanatory in the video that comes with the software. Digital Woodcarver Download, digitalwoodcarver.com, uh, the support and downloads page is where you'll be able to find these files as of midnight tonight uh, with the instructions and everything. And um, all of these new tools that I'm adding, it's because TNG gives me the power to integrate my scripts, to integrate you know codes and things and functions, my personal functions. If you had a personal function you wanted to create an operation, maybe there's an operation you run all the time, you know, maybe it's a pocket cut or something or, you know, a milling cut or something. You can create a custom function and a custom button if you want. You don't necessarily need to use the button. You don't have to create the button, uh, but you can create a custom function and run it from the, the program. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing. I'm taking all of my old scripts I'll give you one last example. One last example. Let's see here. Find the eyes. One of my other programs, one of my other Windows programs that I've written is a simple surfacing toolpath generator. Basically, you choose your scale, inches or millimeter. The surface area size, what size you're surfacing. Your cutting tool diameter, whatever it might be. Your step over, how far you want to step over of that bit. In my case, you know, I want to step over 33 and a third percent of that bit. This is a percentage box, you know. My rapid rate, how fast I want to mill at. So, you know, I'm going to run probably about 80 inches a minute on my rapid rate. Uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, the rapid rate on my machine, I apologize, is uh, 150 inches a minute. My feed rate, I'm going to run 80 inches a minute. You know, I'm going to mill this at 80 inches a minute. I'm going to plunge at 25 inches a minute, and I have a router, not a spindle. If I had a spindle, 
then I would put in the spindle speed. So it, it generates the spindle speed when it turns on the spindle, it ramps it up to that spindle speed. And then my safe clearance gap above my Z. And then my cutting depth, how much I want to mill off the surface, you know, whatever it might be. When I generate that G code, it's going to, you know, run that, you know, that's that, that code. I, I can run that. Oh, are you not seeing my screen? All right. Let's, uh, let's, uh. That is so funny, Laney. Jesus Christmas, son. Get it together tonight. I am just having one heck of a night, ladies and gentlemen. All right. You should be seeing my screen now. You should be seeing my screen now. That is hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Okay. Once again, uh, I have a surfacing toolpath generator that uh, I've created. And in that surfacing toolpath generator, uh, you set your scales, inches or millimeter, the size of your work area, the size of your tool, your step over, in my case, I'll step over, let's say 25%, um, my rapid rate, my feed rate, and my plunge rate. If I have a router or a spindle, if I have a router, then select router. If I have a spindle, then I'm gonna set my spindle speed my rapid gap above the material and then how much material I want to remove and I'm going to generate that you know that code you know and let's uh Reset. And when your generate button is not green, that means one of your settings is incorrect. So let's scale that. If it will not let you generate it, if it will not let you generate the code, reset, and notice I don't have a reset button on here. File new, right? File new, click on file new. And let's do that again. Bam, 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 bam. And we would generate that G code. Then we would save that G code and it'll save it as a tap file. Right? And whatever it might be, let's say, uh, you know, uh, cutting board surface sample. And, you know, I come into my TNG software I open file open and I open that tap file and it creates my surfacing tool path you know for that file and everything but now here in about a week or two once again this program will be obsolete and it will be integrated into TNG so all I have to do is click a button put in the size of my material my spindle speed everything that you saw there click OK and it will automatically start running it. or I could set it to where I could click OK it loads the file and then I could hit the start button. Either one. When I click OK in the prompt, it'll start running it. Or if I click start, you know, either one. So 
uh, everything is getting integrated into the TNG software because TNG gives us the power to add our own custom functions and scripts. And that's what I'm doing uh, for digital woodcarver, uh, you know, for the digital woodcarver machines and the programs and things like that. My IntelliSense, uh, my, my surfacing toolpath generator for any surfacing anything, not just waste boards and all for surfacing any materials and everything. Um, all of that is going to be integrated into TNG now and it's gonna have its own custom function and custom button. I won't need an outside Windows application. I won't need a spread seed. I won't need another G code generator and everything. It's all gonna be integrated within TNG. And that is very cool. You know, that's very cool. Now the surfacing G code generator is not, or surfacing toolpath generator is not a uh, download yet. It's not available yet, you know, uh, in the new integration for TNGs, but it will be in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. All right. Sylvia, what do you mean by, does that mean we will get an upgrade? What does that mean? What upgrade to what? Because you just, you're just installing these files into the TNG software and everything uh, and it's adding these functions and everything to the software so it's basically uh, updating the software with these new scripts and buttons and features and all but when you say getting an upgrade what do you mean by that let me know comment section and if there's any questions let me know that as well So, the uh, William uh, Williams question is: So, when the new TNG upgrade, with the new TNG upgrade, will the functions you just added still be there, or will they be replaced uh, with even newer scripts? Well, you have to understand something. Planet CNC TNG makes the software, right? We're just adding to it. We're just adding to it. So if they update to version two, then we're going to make sure that our scripts and everything are updated accordingly for version two. So you will just go in and update our scripts. It's two different companies now. Planet CNC, TNG, they make the boards, the controllers, you know, the controller software. Uh, we don't control, you know, this is not integrated into their, you know, into their software from the factory. When you download, you know, any upgrades or updates and everything from Planet CNC TNG, um, you would go in and add these new scripts and buttons and everything in your profile folders. Profile folders, what we've been talking about tonight. And this is showing you how to do that. So, the if version 2 of TNG comes out down the road or something, uh, we will update our scripts accordingly. So they work well with version two or any version of TNG. Uh, and uh, we will notify you of those updates by the support and downloads page of digitalwoodcarver.com. And William, you're a customer. Sylvia, you're a customer. Every customer should be checking in on that support and downloads page every once in a while because we post new updates on there all the time. We've got new post processors for your Vetric software. We've got the latest TNG software for you to download. If you're not running the Planet CNC TNG 2018, hold on a second. Let me get it to uh, show up on the
I love how it wants to show up on my primary screen. Uh, give me a second. Um, <laughs> on one second they got it where you click on it it goes away um, it keeps popping up on my second screen you son of a gun If you are not running the 2018-917 version of TNG, then you're running an older version, and you need to update to the latest version. And we provide the latest versions of all of our software and setting files, and soon all those scripts and everything will be on here as well. All of those latest versions are on there as well as the latest post processors for the Vetric software and everything. So you got, you should, you should, you guys and girls should keep up with that, uh, you know, and keep your software up to date. Um, you know, with TNG software, it's, it's free to, you know, update. You know what I mean? And William, so when V2 comes out, should we wait for you to provide and all okay to upgrade the v2 yes yes let us uh as soon as uh, as soon as planet cnc notifies us that v2 is out we at digital woodcarver we take it and we run it through a beta test to make sure there's no major funky changes we make sure all of our setting files still work with it you know anything like that anytime there's a major upgrade or whatever we run it through its test and paces and stuff and then we will release and let you know that it's out there to download and update and we'll provide it on the website just like we did with cnc usb controller upgrading to tng you know so i wouldn't just jump on it because there could be some major changes in v2 that might require some setting adjustments and stuff let us do that for you at digital woodcarver we do that you know for our customers William and Sylvia and everybody that's in here. And once we give the thumbs up, we will provide that download here. Provide the latest version of TN for download the latest version. That version will change to the latest version. You'll click there and download it. When it's on the Digital Woodcarver website, it's ready to go. Okay? It's ready to go. Any questions? Any other questions? Um, uh, let's see here. Sylvia says, for the new TNG automatic stuff you were just talking about. So for our scripts and everything, Sylvia, um, yeah, you, there's going to be a folder here on Digital Woodcarver's uh, download page to download those buttons and um, tools if, if you have the DWC Quick Set tool, because that's what the main tool is, and if you have a fourth axis, because that's what the other tool is for, if you don't have either of those two, then none of that applies, right? It's for the quick set tool, the quick set block, the zeroing tool, and the fourth axis. So if you don't have either one of those, it doesn't apply. If it does, then you'll be able to download those files and add them to your TNG. Cool stuff, right? All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 9.26. We're going to leave this open for about four more minutes. Any more questions, now is the time. Uh, Debbie's question is, would it be advisable to wait to add these buttons when the new version of TNG comes out? No, it wouldn't, Debbie, uh, because TNG version 2 is not coming out for quite a long time. You know, we just got the word that uh, it's coming down the pike. 
um, you know, it's coming down the pike and it's got, they're adding some new functions and features to it and stuff, but it's not, it's not coming out for a very long time that I'm aware of. So if you have the quick set block, if you have the fourth axis, now's the time to download those files. And these new files and functions and stuff and, and scripts and everything, along with the how to video, that zip folder, that zip folder, that zip file, zip folder, uh, will be uh, posted on uh, digitalwoodcarver.com's download and support page this evening. And um, you will be able to download it as of after midnight, so basically tomorrow. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? If not, I've got some signs that need to be delivered tomorrow, so I gotta go carve them tonight and put a finish on them and stuff because they have to be delivered tomorrow to the National Armory here in town. And if we have no further questions, we are gonna say good night. And there will not be a class next week, ladies and gentlemen. There is no class next week. I will be out of town traveling, so there will be no class uh, next week. And, um, yeah. So, we will be back the week after. Keep a lookout if you do have the quick set zeroing tool and the fourth axis, keep a lookout for those those files and stuff. And if anybody is uh, in the group from the Ocala user group meeting, uh, your class files and everything are coming. I had to make some tweaks in the class files some adjustments and stuff and uh, they'll be coming out and over to your email uh, they're gonna get emailed to you for those the, the Ocala Florida class attendees that came out to Ocala Florida this past weekend those files are gonna be emailed to you shortly I had to make some adjustments in them clean them up some a little bit from class and uh, they'll be good to go all right got a lot of thumbs up and thank yous and all that stuff it was a quiet night. We didn't have a whole lot of viewers tonight because, of course, it's a specialty kind of uh, class. We weren't covering any veteran classes and everything, but I appreciate all of you uh, that hung out with me uh, tonight and, uh, and put up with my screw-ups and everything. All right, everybody. Until next time, I'll see you soon. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.